Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mork, board certified orthopedic surgeon and endoscopic spine specialist. Today I want to talk about a problem that faces both patients and treating physicians, and that is sacroiliac joint pain. I think in the past and in the future, one particular question is where does this pain come from? And certainly, if people have had test injections, there's two possible sources. The typical one and the traditional one, people have thought, comes from the sacroiliac joint itself, which is a very stable joint and held together by some very thick ligaments, really not allowing too much motion. And really, I can imagine that this would be a problem, particularly after some type of pelvic fracture. But oftentimes, I was suspicious that the tendons, the extensor muscle tendons, from the back coming down to insert on the back of the pelvis in the area of the posterior superior iliac spine may be responsible for this pain. Several years ago, my partner and I started to inject an area in the back of the pelvis where the posterior superior iliac spine was. And actually, we found that there was a high incidence of pain coming from the tendons that were inserting in the vicinity of the posterior superior iliac spine in the back of the pelvis, which is actually located right here where this purple arrow is here. These ridges of bone are actually places where traction is being applied to the bone in the form of tendons and muscles pulling on those areas and actually creating ridges. We actually injected this area in several patients and found that uh, the pain was temporarily uh, removed and others have actually noted the same thing. The question is, what is causing the pain in this location and what might be the best treatment? As many of you have known, uh, fusions have been a treatment that's been recommended for this very difficult to treat problem with variable results after a substantial operation and results being reported in the 50 to 70 percent kind of range for good to excellent results. In the paper uh, which I will show you, uh, we performed uh, a study on 38 patients with a two-year follow-up which demonstrated that laser treatment of this area of tendon insertion really gave very good relief, certainly 50 to 100 percent relief in 61% of the patients we treated. On the other hand, a small percentage, about 21%, got no relief. So I determined the operation is kind of a light switch operation. Either they got great results or it didn't help at all. In any event, the operation is performed endoscopically and through a very small incision where the uh, scope is placed down against the bone and the tendon is uh, somewhat lasered. And oddly enough, in a fair number of cases, I was actually able to find a bone spur, which I'll show you here in a minute on the x-ray. Right behind me, I'm going to show you an MRI scan of what can be interpreted as a very small osteophyte. In real life, endoscopically, these are more prominent and actually have a more of a spur or osteophyte formation. But we can see here a faint image of what can be interpreted as an osteophyte if one looks carefully at the MRI portion of the pelvis when looking at an MRI of the lumbar spine, as I'm going to show you here. This area here is a small bony protuberance here noted on the outside of the pelvic crest in the vicinity of the superior, posterior superior iliac spine. A lesser amount can be seen here. This is actually a better picture here. Oftentimes, these spurs will be sticking into the tendon. I also had an opportunity to send a portion of this tendon or this area of degenerative tissue to pathology, and it looks surprisingly like tendon from a tennis elbow. It had the characteristics of a non-inflammatory degenerative type of appearance microscopically. Also of note is that I noticed that this pain can on occasion cause a pain that radiates down the legs even into the calf and into the feet on rare occasions. This false radicular pain 
has nothing to do with the lumbar spine. As a matter of fact, when I see somebody coming to the office with radicular pain, that is pain running down their legs, into, even into their feet, uh, and they have a negative MRI scan, nothing to suggest any disc herniations or stenosis to account for the leg pain, this is the first place I look. If I take this person to the hospital or to a, a, a clinic and inject the sacroiliac joint area, uh, in the posterior superior iliac spine area and their pain goes away, uh, especially in their legs, then the diagnosis becomes this tendonitis, this degenerative tendonitis, or what people oftentimes call sacroiliac joint syndrome. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. I think that this is endoscopic treatment of this uh, with debridement and sometimes the use of the laser, which is a great alternative to a sacroiliac joint fusion which has considerably more morbidity uh, and a longer recovery than an endoscopic procedure such as I'm describing. Well, thanks for listening, and uh, if you have any questions, please look me up or give me a call at the office. Thank you.